The following satellite transmission, copyrighted by the Spiritual Renaissance Institute, is available for live broadcast in 10 seconds or for taping and rebroadcast by any AM, FM, shortwave, cable, or video outlet globally. This is a WBN Worldwide Broadcasting Network production. This is Vern Benham Grimsley with the Spiritual Renaissance Broadcast. Recently in San Francisco, a man on the street reporter asked passersby this question, Are you a spiritual person? A real estate saleswoman said, yes, I am. I live my life spiritually. I'm interested in material things, but if I had to choose between material things and the spiritual, I would definitely choose the spiritual. A student, a young man, said, yes, I believe in God, but I don't believe you have to go through all the rituals or all that formal religion dictates. They're just out to make money. An architecture undergraduate student said, no, I'm not. I have to see something to believe it. I have to have a reason for believing something. A spiritual person believes in some kind of a myth, he said, a myth that has been established by other myths. You might as well say you believe in witchcraft. A botany undergraduate student at the university said, yes, I believe every man has a spirit. It's part, a very important part, the most important part of us. I think the spirit is, in the end, what really counts. I'm a spiritualist and an idealist. A zoology undergraduate said, fairly spiritual I am. I think young people today are searching and looking more than the older generation. Older people have stopped searching. They're more set in their ways. And a secretary responded to the question, are you a spiritual person on the streets of San Francisco? With this answer, I'm very spiritual. I believe in everything. She said, I believe in astrology, the tarot cards, I Ching, life beyond, black magic, witchcraft, white magic. I believe in everything. It's all spiritual. Between those two extremes, the young man who said he didn't believe in anything and that last woman who said she believed in everything, where do your convictions lie? Do you believe in anything worth believing? And what possible difference could it possibly make in the living of your life? Ponder this parallel. The famous scientist Sir Isaac Newton found that each and every action has its corresponding reaction. This is every bit as true spiritually as it is physically. It is written, as you sow, so also shall you reap. Or consider the ancient proverb, eat, drink, and be merry, for tomorrow you may die. If you eat, drink, and make merry enough tomorrow, you will wish you were dead. But the truth is you reap what you sow. You get what you earn, just as surely as overeating results in indigestion. Hatred can give you ulcers. Anxiety can cause high blood pressure. Pessimism can result in psychological depression. That human beings were created, intended, formed to live in faith, hope, and love is well indicated by the fact that human beings simply function better living by faith, hope, and love. You were born for this. You were created by God for this. You are a son or daughter of the living God, and there are real consequences to your thoughts and your actions. There's an ancient Arabian poem. Remember three things come not back. The arrow sent upon its track, it will not swerve, it will not stay at speed, it flies to wound or slay the spoken word so soon forgot by thee, but it has perished not. In other hearts tis living still and doing work for good or ill, and the lost opportunity that cometh back no more to thee, in vain thou weepest, in vain dost yearn, those three will never more return. There are real consequences to your thoughts and your actions. You can never go back and relive yesterday again or last year or 10 years ago or 20 or 30 or 40 years ago. All you have is the moment. The philosophers term it the eternal now. Seize the moment you hold in your grasp this instant and give it to God wholeheartedly with a total souled commitment. Back in the 1800s, there was a steamship which sailed between London and Plymouth, but it was such a lumbering, awkward craft that every time it entered the dock, it injured itself or scraped or scratched itself on the dock gate. But then one day it hove into sight, and while everybody was watching, looking to see what damage would be done to the ship this time, this time it sailed in easily and truly without a mark, and a bystander shouted up to the ship captain, well, what happened? To which came the reply, same old ship, but we have a new skipper on board. That is what will happen. That is what will happen in your life when you give your life to God. No matter how many mistakes, failures, frustrations, no matter how many times you've stumbled and fallen, how many wrong things you've done, even if you've done things deliberately wrong, in willful disloyalty to God, God is forgiving. God is quick to accept you if you will turn to God with all your heart. God will make you new from the inside out. You may be the same old person, but you're going to have a new skipper 
when you give your life to God and turn your life and your will over to the will, the wisdom, the plan, and purpose of God for your life, for your death, for your time, and your eternity. Everybody wants to live a long life, but hardly anybody wants to get old, and yet you cannot have the one without the other. Some processes inevitably require the passage of time. You live in an age on this planet in which astronauts have gone to the moon, and you can fly around the world in only a few hours, and yet a baby still takes nine months, and thousands of years are necessary for the growth of one giant California redwood tree. Things take time. There's a great poem I heard years ago. Put up someplace where you can see the cryptic admonishment, T, T, T. When you worry about how slowly you climb, always remember things take time. The ripening of fruit on the tree and wheat in the field require time. The same with your spiritual growth. Jesus compared truth to seed sown by a farmer. Some falls on good earth, other on rocky or thorny soil, but some sprouts and grows vitally. And the kingdom of God is like a mustard seed, he said. Jesus himself died in his 30s. His life wasn't very long, but it was very full, and it was very, very deep. To love and serve God is to live a joyously full life and a deep life. It's to use all of your potentials. That's what it means to live a deep life. To utilize all the possibilities God has given to you. Physically, mentally, and spiritually. Some people have stopped thinking. They don't use their minds anymore. Recent research in the field of psychology indicates that's exactly what has happened to some people. A study was made among medical professionals in Amsterdam, Holland, and it was found that most doctors, physicians, over the age of 35 were less capable of logical thought and reasoning than younger doctors because of, quote, their established opinions and attitudes, end of quote. The report said that a thinker will reason about a subject, whereas a non-thinker will only comment, make remarks on a subject. A vast difference. Have you stopped thinking about your life, the purpose of your life, where you came from, why you're here, where are you going? Have you given up your quest to solve the riddle of existence? Or do you still want to know whence, why, and whither? God has given you a mind with which you can seek these answers. And it is written, seek and you will find, knock, and the door will be opened, ask, and you shall receive. The scientist Kepler, looking up from his mathematical computations, once remarked, I am only thinking my thoughts after thee, O God. William Carey said, expect great things from God, attempt great things for God. That makes life exciting. That is the greatest adventure in all of time and eternity. The quest to do the will of God, to actualize it, to live it in your life. The famous humanitarian David Livingstone had every reason in the world just to stay quietly at home in his native Scotland and live his life in a culture dignified, refined manner. But this is what he wrote about himself early in his life. This was his philosophy. This is creed. I will place no value on anything I have or may possess except in its relationship to the kingdom of God. Anything I have will be given or kept according as giving it or keeping it. I shall most promote the kingdom of God. Listen to that philosophy. Listen to those priorities. Putting first things first. It is written, seek first the kingdom of God and his righteousness and all other things. Everything else necessary for life will be added to you. But seek first the kingdom of God and his righteousness. And the two great commandments were, you shall love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, all your mind and strength, and you shall love your neighbor as yourself. John Knox once wrote, the world is still waiting to see what God can do with a man wholly consecrated to his service. And I have a similar quotation posted up by my door. Every time I walk out, I see it by Dwight L. Moody. It says, in essence, and I'm paraphrasing, the world is waiting to see what God can do with and in and through the life of a man totally dedicated to God. I mean to be that man. What an invigorating way to start every day. Dedicate your life to God. Begin to live the words of Francis of Assisi. Lord, make me an instrument of thy peace, that where there is hatred, I may bring love, that where there is wrong, I may bring the spirit of forgiveness, that where there is discord, I may bring harmony, that where there is error, I may bring truth, that where there is doubt, I may bring faith, that where there is despair, I may bring hope, 
that where there are shadows, I may bring thy light, that where there is sadness, I may bring joy. Lord, grant that I may seek rather to comfort than to be comforted, to understand than to be understood, to love than to be loved. For it is by giving that one receives. It is by self-forgetting that one finds. It is by forgiving that one is forgiven. And it is by dying that one awakens to eternal life. May that faith shine in your soul, beginning here and now and lasting forever. Write to us, will you, at the Spiritual Renaissance Institute, Box 3080, Oakhurst, California, 93644. We have free literature on the spiritual life, things I've written on finding God, getting to know God, seven principles of prayer. Write for this literature to Box 3080, Oakhurst, California. For those of you listening in other countries around the world over our international satellite and shortwave network, let me spell the mailing address, SRI Box 3080 Oakhurst, O-A-K-H-U-R-S-T, California, C-A-L-I-F-O-R-N-I-A, 93644, United States of America. This is a non-sectarian, non-profit program proclaiming the dawning spiritual renaissance, the fatherhood of God and the brotherhood of man, the worldwide family of God. And so for now, this is Vern Benham Grimsley saying, May God's will be done by you. Good day.